Hello my fellow crafters, welcome back to my channel. My name is David and today I'm going to be making a card. And uh, I'm actually uh, uh, moving away just for today, don't worry, from my art journal collection. Um, I've got the new Tim Holtz uh, stamps in from Stampers Anonymous. Um, so I'm going to be playing with those. So let's switch cameras, shall we? So we can have a look at what I'm going to be doing because I've got some more fun stuff to play with. Um, okay, what I've got here is the new Tim Holtz, um, how is it called? Floral trims. I just fell in love with them instantly. I saw them and I thought, yes, I need those. So I got them. Uh, this stencil uh, I got as well from the same release. I'm going to be working with the sentiment, um, the, the note quotes. I'm going to put those on there as a sentiment on the card. And what I did, this came with this... Uh, like that and I just peeled that off uh, makes it a lot easier to get the stamps off the of the backing so uh, that's what I did um, so let's get on with it but what I also got and I'm pretty excited about this now if you know me you know I'm a huge fan of the Elizabeth Craft Designs watercolor paints um, these are fantastic they're highly pigmented they do the job as they should um, um, but um, there are some colors that I thought, well, I'm, I'm sort of missing that. And then I saw um, this beauty. And it's from um, Gansai Tambi. I think that's how you pronounce it. Gansai Tambi. I don't know. Um, and it's a beautiful Japanese brand. Um, let me show you. I will open it up. Look at that. Look at those colors. Now, these are colors uh, that I did not have before. Some of them, some are, this one is quite similar, but uh, it's different in the end. It's more pastel -y. it's more, yeah, very nice, soft and creamy. So, I love this. Um, it's my first different kind of watercolor palette than the Elizabeth Craft Design. So, um, I, I had a little test run and they work absolutely lovely. So, but first things first, let's start with stamping, shall we? I've got my Misty here and I took out the, the little mat that goes underneath because these are red rubber stamps and you need that uh, space for them. So let's get my stamp out. These can go to the side, don't need them now. Um, and I'm going to take this one, this beautiful stamp. So what I've got here is a piece of watercolor paper, 200 grams, so not the thickest version. And I'm going to put that into my platform. Then I'm going to position my flower on there, like so. I'm going to trim this to size later. So now I'm going to stamp in first uh, in black onyx, onyx black, onyx black, <laughs> that is. Uh, doesn't matter which one, you can use uh, any ink as long as you can heat emboss with it. I just prefer either the first of Claire or the first of Vine. In my humble opinion, there's no difference between the two of them. Um, they're both black, intense black, they're both pigment inks, uh, so yeah, don't know the difference, to be honest. <laughs> uh, but I've got them both and I'm using up this one and when this one is gone I will just switch over to the first of Claire. But I'm not going to waste anything. Now the secret to this is making sure there's enough ink on your stamp. So I'm really just doing a tap, 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 tap all over. There's a lot of fine details in here. And stamp that. Now I'm going to take my easy to glide tool, stamp chucky, whatever you want to call it, um, to get an even impression. Beautiful already. I will just give it one more go so I make sure there's enough ink on there because I'm going to heat emboss on this. So I'm going to get my clear embossing powder out dump a layer over that and heat set that and that makes it a lot easier to color in because I am not a watercolor artist by all means and uh, I enjoy it I have fun with it but yeah <laughs> uh, this helps me along beautiful there we go take this out there we go I'll put my Misty to the side, clean that up later. Well, I don't clean the rubber stamps, but um, yeah. So that's that. Next, I'm coming in with my Wow Clear Embossing Powder. I've got that in a big 
top. You can use any clear embossing powder you want. It doesn't need to be the white one. I just like the big tops so I can put it into my big container. Makes life a bit easier. And I will just cover this image up. Make sure I've got a good layer of that powder on there. There we go. Now I'm going to heat up my heat tool. Um, I saw somebody the other day that I do want to talk about. Uh, somebody said, heat your heat tool up for five minutes. Why? Uh, I heat it up. When it's too hot for my hand, I take it away and it's, it's warm. You don't need to heat it up for five minutes. I don't see any reason to that. You see it works perfectly fine. Now this is already pretty on its own. Just put a sentiment on and you're done. But I'm gonna obviously do something with this. So this can go. Um, I'm gonna get out my Gumsai Tambi. I think it's called, I can't remember. So I'm gonna put those, well, sort of try to keep things in frame. <laughs> It's a mess on my desk, by the way, but okay. I need those. My magnet can go. There we go. So what I've got here is my water spray. I've got my brushes. I've got my water over there, uh, over there. So what I'm doing, I'm spraying the back and front. This helps with preventing the curling. And I'm just, uh, yeah, really spritzing a good layer of water on there because that will already loosen up the fibers of the paper um, and it, yeah, it makes blending easier. Fairly, that's what it is. It makes blending easier. So I've got my clean tub of water here. What I like to do is I'm going to use these colors. So I might as well just give them a spritz of water already because that helps me along. And I will just show you how I, it's my interpretation. As I said, I'm not a watercolor specialist. Um, so I'm going to use this brush. It's not the biggest watercolor brush, but it is a watercolor brush. Going to wet that. And I'm going to pick up the lightest pink here, number 18 for the people that want to know. And I'm just activating that color, putting it on the, there. Get a piece of paper towel. And I'm just gonna start to give this a wash of color. Now the embossing powder will act as a resist. So don't be scared to go over your black lines. And just give this all a wash of that beautiful pink. Because I sprayed the water on there, it really gives me some time to work that in, all the nooks and crannies, these beautiful stamps. So I will just do this flower first. And I will let that dry a bit. And then I'm coming in with the lightest green. So I'll pick up this color, tap off the excess on my mat, and I will just, let's do this one. Do the same, give it a wash of color. And that um, embossing powder will not just resist the color, but it will also function as a barrier. So it will stay inside the lines, which is helpful for me. <laughs> Beautiful, intense color this is. So 
So that's what I'll do with all the leaves. And I'll switch to a smaller brush, get some clean water. Then I will go into the darker pink one. And what I'll do with this one, I'll pick that up again, dab off the excess on my cloth, and I will just go into the center of the leaf. And here there would be a natural shadow because the leaves, let me show you, the leaves overlap there, you see? So there would be a natural shadow and more towards here. This will be darker, this would be darker. This is quite wet still, so I'll just dab off some of that ink, or paint that's on there, I should say. It's not ink. And just continue to build up that darker color, like so. Clean off my brush. And I will go into the darker green. So I'm doing it step by step. And with the darker green, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down the center, dab that on with just tiny little dabs. Or Now with this, the leaf is folding here, so there will be some darkness there and some here. So I'm just, yeah, following logic. And it really is not important. You get it right, guys. Uh, we, we don't have to be actual natural watercolor specialists, right? We just want to have fun. So what I did now, I cleaned off my brush. Then I dab off the excess. And I go back in here. And I'm starting in the lighter color, you see? And I'm blending that into that darker color. Sort of pushing that back, cleaning off my brush. So I don't want these hard lines. I want this darker color to fade out a bit into that light. And here I'm really pushing that back a bit because it was a bit too much. So I'm picking up some of that ink, the lighter ink, sorry, the lighter pink, I should say. And Push that darkness back a bit and then come back and blend the two. Same here. So I'm going all around and blend in that darker color with the light. So taking away the hard lines. Now what you achieve with this is that you really get some depth on the flowers. You see, it's darker in the center. We're going to do a bit more with that. I'm going to come in with this color, um, clean off my brush, get some clean water, and pick that color up. Take off the excess, so fairly the same as we did over there. And I'm just going to color in the center of my flower, because that's the darkest bit anyway. There's some white left here. And then I'm just lightly coming out a bit, darkening up the center of the flower. I'm just dabbing it on. And by dabbing it on, you already start to blend a bit. And because there's still a lot of moisture in that card, um, card stock, I should say, um, yeah, it will also start with the blending process already. And I want some darkness here at the tops of the flowers as well. So might as well put that on. Clean my brush, dip off the excess of the water, and do the same again. So blend that in with the medium color we applied. So it's, it's not the quickest way of coloring, I agree. But then again, it doesn't always have to be quick, right? And watercolor paint is very forgiving. Um, like here, I went outside of the lines. Let me show you how I fix that. Uh, I cleaned my brush. Now I'm just going to put some water outside of the where I did the smudge and dab. 
outside and that and it's clean already and I can fix this bit here just by going back in with the watercolor paint and done so watercolor paint is very forgiving that's why I like it as well and then I'm gonna take this yellow yellowish greenish color and what I'm doing with that is I'm gonna put some dots there are some um, yeah stamens in there some stamps I don't know what they're called the centers of the flowers where the bees go <laughs> I don't know um, and I'll just put some yellow dots there simple as that no rocket science and while I have the yellow I will just put some into these flowers because well I can what I'm also going to do with the yellow into the green leaves I want some yellow oops David there we go some yellow at the sides of the leaves because for me that will really give it some dimension so I'll put that on then I will clean off my brush because we still have to blend in the darker green right so start in the lighter green and blend that with that darker so we get a soft blend taking off the excess of wiping it off I'm blending that yellow into the green and that will really give it dimension you see makes them more alive that's how I color the flowers etc now there's a lot of white space um, behind the flowers and what I want to do with that is I'm gonna take my blue color the light blue and with that I'm just gonna color in this bit so I'm just gonna come in and color that same on this side I'm doing this with quite a big brush but these brushes still have a smaller tip so that's not too bad this one I don't know what brand it is they don't put a brand on these I've got loads of these so I'm just gonna yeah with the big brush go around the flowers etc now reason why I'm not coloring everything is because of, obviously I've prepared one because this would take a long time to color it all in I'm just quickly gonna try this because what I want to do is get even more structure in the background and I need my stencil for that so what I've got is my stencil that I'm going to put on there. I've got a clean, wet baby wipe. Um, these can go, don't need them anymore. So these can go to the side. And what I'm doing, I'm really pressing that stencil down. And with my baby wipe, just around my finger, I'm coming in and I'm going to go into that stencil. Take a clean piece. And go over that clean piece and that is a really fun technique but look at the result you get you see now of course as I said I've already prepared something so let's have a look if you just continue doing this and you build up your card you get this I adore this I love it I think it's very nice um, so yeah let's turn that into a card shall we now what I did I've already trimmed this to size let me give you the measurements I've trimmed this to five and three quarters by four and a half and then I've got a black matte layer Then I'm gonna put this on and I've got my card base so and I'm going up so six and a quarters by four what was it <laughs> four and a half yeah so this is four um, four and three quarters by five and three quarters five six sorry and then this is six and a quarter etc so yeah uh, that's the sizes I chose you can do it smaller you can make it an A2 card you can do whatever you want um, but I'm not done with the stamping part yet so I'm gonna get my misty out again 
and I'm going to place that in the corner and put my magnet on just to be sure um, and I'm going to take this one little set and I want to have my stamp my sentiment stamp right here I think I'm gonna put that right here right here there it's gonna be so I'm gonna pick that up and do that one first now I'm just gonna stamp that out in black give that ink some time to adhere to the paper because there's a lot of stuff going on on that card it's not a clean card anymore look at that this is fun this is a fun stamp set I hadn't used haven't used it before now what am I gonna put in there hello there you got this shiny little note um, I think hello there because you can always use a hello there right so I'm gonna put that right in the middle of that circle somewhere well there and pick that up ink it up and stamp that on there perfect I'm not going to do anything more except for getting my embossing powder out again the clear one I'm always double checking because I've got the same uh, one with white now obviously when it's not melted they look the same so okay now let me put this away safely hmm. okay I'm gonna heat set this and that is my panel done already so let's build up the card now I'm going to use my um, Elizabeth craft designs wider tape for this so I'm first going to put a strip in the middle then I'm going to put a strip here at the side okay and then I'm going to peel it off now this one I'm peeling off completely and the rest I am just gonna take the corner and fold that like so and the same here take the corner fold it so I've got my card panel here which is a quarter inch smaller than this one so I really gotta make sure that's in the middle uh, um, and I have to pick it up for that what I'm gonna do now I'm taking these strips and just pull them and press down pull that and press down pull this one and press down and the last one you guessed it pull it press it down and now we've got a beautiful card panel on a black matte layer now that black matte layer will really stand out here on my card front what I'm doing for that I am going to use my glue and here's the finished card I love this one um, yeah, all watercolor and stamping and yeah I think it looks absolutely stunning fun technique with that stencil and um, so yeah I hope you liked it too this was it for today guys thank you for joining me uh, if you liked it give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't done so yet please subscribe to my channel um, channel is growing but yeah I can always use more subscribers and uh, yeah you will see more fun videos like this one so uh, yeah thank you for watching this one and I would love to see you for the next one thank you very much bye